When I was 17 years old, I had a dream. I dreamt that I was sitting in a masjid and a little girl walked up to me and asked me a question. She asked me, why do people have to leave each other? The question was a personal one, but it seemed clear why that question was chosen for me. I was one to get attached. Ever since I was a child, this temperament was clear. While other children in preschool could easily recover once their parents left, I could not. My tears, once set into motion, did not stop easily. As I grew up, I learned to become attached to everything around me. From the time I was in the first grade, I needed a best friend. As I got older, any fallout with a friend shattered me. I couldn't let go of anything. People, places, events, photographs, moments, even outcomes became objects of strong attachment. If things didn't work out the way I wanted or imagined, I was devastated. And disappointment for me wasn't an ordinary emotion. It was catastrophic. Once let down, I never fully recovered. I could never forget, and the break never mended. Like a glass vase that you place on the edge of a table, once broken, the pieces never quite fit again. But the problem wasn't with the vase, or even that the vases kept breaking. The problem was that I kept putting them on the edge of tables. Through my attachments, I was dependent on my relationships to fulfill my needs. I allowed those relationships to define my happiness or my sadness, my fulfillment or my emptiness, my security and even my self-worth. And so like the vase placed where it will inevitably fall, through those dependencies, I set myself up for disappointment. I set myself up to be broken. And that's exactly what I found. One disappointment, one break after another. But the people who broke me were not to blame any more than gravity can be blamed for breaking the vase. We can't blame the laws of physics when a twig snaps because we leaned on it for support. The twig was never created to carry us. There's a crucial lesson in the Quran that there is only one handhold that never breaks. There's only one place where we can lay our dependencies and only one relationship that should define our self-worth. Only one source from which we should seek our ultimate happiness, fulfillment and security that places God. But this world is all about seeking those things everywhere else. Some of us seek it in our careers, some seek it in wealth, some in status. Some, like me, seek it in our relationships. And that's exactly where I spent much of my own life, seeking a way to fill my inner void. And so it was no wonder that the little girl in my dream asked me this question. It was a question about loss, about disappointment. It was a question about being let down, a question about seeking something and coming back empty-handed. It was about what happens when you try to dig in concrete with your bare hands. Not only do you come back with nothing, you break your fingers in the process. And I learned this not by reading it, not by hearing it from a wise teacher. I learned it by trying it again and again and again. And so the little girl's question was essentially my own question being asked to myself. Ultimately, the question was about the nature of the dunya as a place of fleeting moments and temporary attachments, as a place where people are with you today and leave or die tomorrow. But this reality hurts our very being because it goes against our nature. We as human beings are made to seek love and strive for what is perfect and what is permanent. And so we create ageless creams and cosmetic surgery in a desperate attempt to hold on, in a desperate attempt to mold this world into what it is not and will never be. And that's why if we live in dunya with our hearts, it breaks us. That's why this dunya hurts. It is because the definition of dunya as something temporary and imperfect goes against everything we are made to yearn for. And we must also realize that nothing happens without a purpose, nothing, not even broken hearts, not even pain. Pain itself is a pointer to our attachments. That which makes us cry, that which causes us the most pain, is where our false attachments lie. After years of falling into the same pattern of heartbreak and disappointment, I finally began to realize something profound. I had always thought that love of dunya meant being attached to material things, and I was not attached to material things. 
I was attached to people. I was attached to moments. I was attached to emotions. And so I thought that the love of dunya just didn't apply to me. What I didn't realize was that people, moments, attachments were all part of dunya. What I didn't realize was that all the pain I had experienced in life was due to one thing and one thing only, love of dunya. Looking back at the dream I had when I was 17, I wonder if that little girl was me. I wonder this because the answer that I gave her was a lesson I would need to spend the next painful years of my life learning. My answer to her question of why people have to leave each other was, because this life isn't perfect. For if it was, what would the next be called? The new edition of Yasmin Mogahed's book, Reclaim Your Heart, is now available on Amazon. Reclaim Your Heart was made available in part through social media by Islamic Relief USA. Sometimes the world begins to look dark. But there's one thing that brings light, is when you help relieve a person's suffering and make their world brighter. In their darkest days, you sent food, water, and health care, warm clothes, and fuel to stay warm. You sent shelter, mattresses, and blankets. You sent relief, hope, and love. Thank you for working together for a better world.